Photo, Diana Davies Collection, New York Public Library. For years, people have debated what actually happened that night in June 1969 when Stonewall was raided and a new, more militant struggle for equality was born. Due to the debates and insistence of some to claim they knew all aspects of what had actually happened, an incredible void opened up where people could invent, imagine, or distort Stonewall and our history to their own objectives. But the myths of Stonewall are endless, but they're easily dispelled when you look at the material proof and plain logic. 1. Judy Garland's death and funeral did not cause Stonewall. The myth of Judy Garland's death being the impetus for Stonewall is the most belittling to those of us who participated. It's stereotypical and self-loathing, and with this article we add new information which finally ends this silly tale. One clue is where the idea originated, from a conservative, straight columnist at the Village Voice named Howard Smith, who actually was a friend of the police captain who led the raid. Simple logic says it's just not so. People of my age, late teens and early 20s at the time, were not dancing to Judy Garland in the Stonewall. We were dancing to Diana Ross, Beatles, and Barbara Streisand. My best memory is dancing to the Fifth Dimension song, Let the Sunshine In, which is from the musical Hair. Judy Garland was of an older generation. We wanted to dance our asses off when we were in Stonewall, and that you didn't do to Garland's music. But the final nail in the Judy Garland myth are articles about the funeral at Campbell's funeral home. If you look at the photos and reports in the New York Times, as well as other newspaper reports, you'll note that the subjects in the photos, as well as the majority of quotes, are from housewives. When you look more closely for the very few men in the photos, they're in suits and ties. We all know that is not the kind of person who fought at Stonewall. Men who wore suits and ties ran from the police for fear of losing their good-paying jobs, or their families finding out about them. It's time to bury the Judy Garland myth for good. We were not empowered by a dead singer. Let's put that coffin into the ground already. 2. Nobody knows exactly how many people were at Stonewall. I was recently filming a BBC television show in front of the Stonewall when a tour group came by. Some people paid for entry and some were regulars that were let in without the door charge but that number does give an idea of the average size of the crowd inside. Then, as we all know, once people were let outside those with any standing in society ran for the hills as soon as they could. Those of us who remained, street kids, drag queens, later to be called trans, people of color, and the verging radical gay youth of the day, gathered around the door in a semi-circle the first LGBTQ demonstration one month, after Stonewall went from Washington Square to Stonewall, July 27, 1969. Photo by Fred W. McDara featured in Gay Pride, photographs from Stonewall to today. There were hundreds of passers-by and even more who craned their necks from a distance. That night went on for hours, so anyone who was within a few blocks could say they were at Stonewall that night. But actually participating is another matter. Anyone who says they know how many people were there must not have actually been there, since it occurred in various areas of Christopher Street and around Christopher Street. You don't take a roll call in the middle of a riot. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.